Hey guys, Felix here. In this tutorial, we're going to code our first test bench so that we can simulate our state machine module. But before we can do that, we need to fix a couple things with this module. First, in the last tutorial, I had a typo, and this begin keyword was missing. So if you haven't figured that out and added it yet, go ahead and add that now. The other thing we need to do is I realized that because this clock is so slow compared to the the main clock on the board this reset is not going to get triggered at first when we go to make the test bench so we want to move this to make it easier to trigger the reset and what we can do is just move it up here to the always star block and what that'll do is since always at star runs on every single clock tick of the 50 megahertz clock that's built into the chip since that runs on every clock tick then this reset can get triggered much more easily than if it's only possible on a very slow clock tick. So we'll just clean this up. There we go. Our state machine module is ready to go. Now to create the actual test bench, you'll want to come over to the simulation tab and right click new source a test bench is actually just a regular Verilog module so choose that and the naming convention is to do the name of the module that you're testing and then underscore TB that stands for test bench and just skip this okay The first difference between a test bench module and a regular Verilog module is that test benches are totally self-contained, which means that there's no inputs or outputs that we specify in this first section, none whatsoever. That means we're also going to have to create our own clock and reset registers because they're not getting passed into this module they just don't exist so we have to build them ourselves so that's the first thing about a test bench the second main thing is that your code in here does not need to be synthesizable up to this point we've had to write code that had a hardware equivalent and we call that synthesizable code but in a test bench, because this is just a computer simulation and it's not actually on the FPGA board, we can write code in here that doesn't have a hardware equivalent. So we say this code does not have to be synthesizable. And that gives us a little bit more freedom. It's kind of a little bit closer to regular programming, but it still has the Verilog twist in that your initial blocks and, and other logic blocks run simultaneously. There are a few main sections that we that every test bench will have. First of all, like we mentioned, nothing goes in this first part between the parentheses because it's so, all self-contained. And then then we put definitions like registers and wires, we have our DUT, which is the device undergoing testing. That's the instance of our module. Then we have initializations, which would be things like creating our clock, making the reset, and initializing 
all of our variables uh, or all of our registers and things. And once we have all of that stuff set up, we can finally do the simulation procedure. And that just tells it what sort of actions to perform in order to test everything. For definitions, like we said, we have to build the clock and reset button ourselves. So those are going to be registers, clock and reset. Then our state machine instance needs button and a 3-bit output called L. So there's button. Now when we go to hook up an output or in, from the test bench, we need to, even though this output is a register, in the test bench we need to make it a wire because we want this to be totally driven by whatever value this is. So we'll make this a wire L. Next we instantiate our state machine and we just name it DUT for device undergoing testing. Now here's a nice little shortcut if all of the variables, all the registers and wires and things that you're passing into your instance, if they have the same names, clock, reset, button, L, clock, reset, button, L, if they're all exactly the same names, instead of having to type this whole long thing, whoops, then you can type just this clock reset button L like that and save some time so that's a nice little thing next we want to initialize everything here's our buddy the initial block that we saw before in our for loop tutorial here's where we use those If you recall, these run once only on startup. And that's perfect for a simulation because it's only running through everything in here once. Let's initialize everything. So our clock is going to start out as a zero. Reset is going to start out as a 1. We want to start out reset and then we'll change it to not reset momentarily. Our button should not be pressed to begin with. And now we need a clock. We just made our clock equal to 0 so we can create a clock signal by just inverting it every so often. We can do that by putting a delay on it, say 10 units of time. This syntax just means delay for 10 units of time and the unit is nanoseconds. So we have a 10 nanosecond delay and after a 10 nanosecond delay we want to just invert the clock. But to generate a clock we need to do this multiple times. So we can use the repeat keyword and give it a 4. So it will do this 4 times so that would be a 1, 2, 3, 4. That would be 2 full clock pulses. So it's been reset we have two positive edges that should be enough to make sure that it it hits this reset over here. And then 
we can go ahead and turn off the reset and now we want to make sure that the clock just continues to run forever for the rest of the simulation so we just use the forever keyword and it'll keep on going now that everything is all initialized and we have a clock we can tell it what sorts of things we want it to do to test it so we can do another initial block again because it only has to run once and this is actually going to run simultaneously with this so as these are initializing the stuff in here is also running so we might want to give this a delay before we do anything and then press the button we'll simulate pressing the button by just setting the button register to a one because that's what would happen on the board and then maybe for a little bit less time I'm just kind of picking some numbers but if you put them in this magnitude it'll help us later on with observing it in the, the simulator after a little bit longer time then we'll turn the button back off and we probably want to do this a few times so repeat will do the job for us whoops repeat how about four times make it a block by putting okay so it'll run this four times push wait push wait release four times and then that's all we wanted to do so we put the finish keyword when we have this what happens is it'll it'll run through it'll create all of these wires and registers it'll create the instance it starts initializing all of these things it starts running this it's gonna hit this forever clock and just continue to oscillate the clock back and forth until this finishes running through all four of these cycles meanwhile this forever clock is still going throughout this whole process but once this block once this initial block gets down to finish it says all right that's it folks wrap it up shut everything down we finished and so that's how you can make sure that your simulation doesn't go on forever it doesn't go on indefinitely because when it hits this finished block in here in this initial block it will just terminate everything that's going on so what you don't want to do is do not put a forever statement somewhere before your finish statement in the same block because it will run forever and never get to finish and that would be a disaster all right I know that was a lot of coding but we have our test bench set up so in the next tutorial we will run it in the simulator so stick around